Hi, this is Andrew Grease at QSpray.com. Today we're talking about the first in a series of short videos about pest control equipment productivity secrets. So first, the question is why productivity? And the second question is why is it a secret? So let's talk about productivity. And the National Pest Management Association reports that regardless of what size company you have, your labor cost, your productivity is the biggest expense you have. Kind of like an iceberg, productivity is the unseen portion underneath the water. But if you think about it, you know, you have great marketing that gets the phone to ring. You have a great salesperson who can convert that lead into a sale. You got a beautiful truck and a greatly trained technician who who's, looks professional and is well trained and crisp and clean and shows up, and the equipment doesn't work. And so his productivity is, is shot, and all that other stuff doesn't matter. Productivity is key. And why do we say it's a secret? Well, most of the equipment problems we see in our spray equipment repair shop are completely avoidable. And we see lots of the same problems with lots of the same causes. So today we're going to talk about some of those and hopefully help you reduce equipment problems, reduce repair expenses, reduce downtime, and reduce missed appointments. So let's jump into it. Oh, a couple ground rules first. Not every example I share is going to apply to you. For example, some of the things we talk about are going to be the technician's responsibility, some of the employer's responsibility. Some of the things we're going to talk about apply to hand sprayers, some apply to power sprayers. Some apply more to if you have a single vehicle, some apply to companies with multiple vehicles. So whatever, pick the things that work for you and ignore the rest. And hopefully you'll find something of value today. So the first productivity secret is check and clean your filter. And you know, I don't know why this is a secret, but it is the cause of most of the sprayer problems we see in our repair shop. And when we talk about filtration, we talk about we need to talk about design, operation, and maintenance. So what do we mean by design? First of all, the design has to be good so that the tech can get to it and clean that filter. And so here's an example of bad design. You can see that blue arrow is pointing to that white filter behind the hose reel lift. It's almost impossible to reach that filter, which means it's never going to get checked, which means there's a very, very good chance that you're going to have problems with the sprayer because you can't check the filter. So here's an example of, of one of our sprayers, and you can see it's really easy to get to that filter. It's very easy for the tech to reach, and there's a shutoff valve so the tech can shut off, shut off the flow of water and check that filter even when the tank is full. Operation. We recommend techs check their filter on power sprayers every day, and on hand sprayers a little less frequently, but regularly. And why do we say that? Because we always find problems with filters. And here's one, the filter was full of just tons of gravel and debris. Here's a filter from a landscape sprayer. This tech was spraying pre-emergent, that's what that orange stuff was. And this filter was so clogged that it starved the pump and destroyed the pump. So I'm gonna show you a photo of that destroyed pump in a future slide. So remember this orange colored filter. Here's a filter that is totally, <laughs> there is actually no screen in this filter. You can see the O-ring is this black piece right here. And this is hardened sand and chemical. That's about three inches thick, solid rock. So there was no screen at all in that filter. So these are clearly problems. And, uh, you know, the company's paid the techs to waste time, come to our shop, pay us to clean this out or fix this. And we fixed, but the tech really should have been checking this himself. Here's another one. This was a termite rig. We dumped out the filter and found a bunch of dried chemicals. And this is all, these are rubber gloves that someone had thrown into the tank because that's where you throw your garbage in the tank, of course. So um, this was all stuff that was clogging the filter. Uh, here's a, a manual spray that you recognize. This is a B&G and this B&G filter is totally clogged. Here's another one. The top picture is the clogged filter. Here's what it's supposed to look like. Here's a Birchmeyer backpack filter. You can see debris all over this thing. And here is the handle that slides over this filter. And you can see this is totally gunked up as well. And clearly this is just easy stuff that techs could be cleaning and checking themselves. Maintenance, eventually you have to replace the filter. And this was a great example. The tech came in and said, my pump doesn't work. So we opened the filter. There was no actual screen. There was just the rope, which we, we think this is the pull cord from the Honda that the tech threw in the tank like it was garbage. And I actually saved this. I have this on my desk as a reminder of uh, how important filtration is. Here's a filter that is cracked. You can see the crack right there. And the tech tried to fix it by putting duct tape on it. So, I mean, I guess I give the tech credit for trying to fix the problem. But, you know, A, duct tape isn't going to fix a, a filter crack, and B, if the tech really understood what he was doing, he would have put the, the duct tape on the outside so that the pump sucked the 
tape against the crack, not on the inside where it would be sucked away from the crack. So clearly some training required there. Okay, this is a, uh, another tech came in, said my pump doesn't work. We took one look at the filter, it's covered with chemical. And then we notice the O-ring. And what happens is the chemical swells the O-ring or the gasket in the filter. And the tech couldn't get the gasket inside the filter. So he just put it on the outside. And of course, that doesn't work. It causes air leak and water leak and a total mess. So clearly some training required here. So filtration is key. It's the cause of, of most, of the, not most, many of the problems we see in our equipment repair shop. Pressure issues. Let's talk about pressure issues. And the main pressure issue is techs overpressurize their system to try to get the work done faster. And we have a kind of a, a standing joke in our shop about the pressure ferry. And we say that because when we, we build a power sprayer and we test it and turn it over to the customer, we test it at probably about you know, 75, 80 PSI. But all the sprayers that come back to us for service come back in at 100, 150, 200 PSI. So the joke is the pressure ferry is out there turning up the pressure on all these sprayers. Now, obviously that's, we're being facetious. Techs just turn up the pressure because they want to get done faster. But there's a couple of problems with turning up the pressure. One is, you know, you're going to reduce the life of the equipment. A pump run much faster is going to not last as long as a pump run at a more moderate speed. Uh, the soft parts, the O-rings, the gaskets, the hose is not going to last as long if it's run under pr continuously high pressure. And lastly, uh, when you run at high pressure, you have the risk of drift because your particles, your your particle size is smaller, or spills. If you're if you're at the end of 200 feet of hose and you have a and a hose break at, at the sprayer, it's going to be a much worse chemical spill at 200 PSI than it would at 50. And we find that backpacks are especially sensitive to overpressurization. We see techs, you know, their backpack doesn't spray. So instead of doing some service or bringing it in, they just keep pumping it up and it becomes a major rebuild because they damage the backpack. The next thing we want to talk about pressure is release the pressure. We think releasing the pressure at the end of every, end of every stop will extend the life of your equipment, particularly extend the life of soft parts like O-rings, gaskets, hoses, et cetera. We used to recommend that techs release the pressure at the end of the day, but they forget. So now we say release the pressure at the end of every stop. And lastly, if there's a freeze overnight, if your equipment's under pressure, you're going to have some damage that that water is going to turn to ice and something's going to break. The weak link is going to break. Whereas if you release the pressure, the chances of a freeze damage issue are going to be much less. Number three, secret, clean it out. Again, why is it a secret? Only because so many people don't do it. When you don't clean out your system, you have debris, you have wasted time, you have wasted money. Oh, for those of you who are still with me, still staying awake, uh, thanks for watching. You can take $25 off your first order at QSpray.com. Use your coupon code SOCIAL25 for $25 off your first online order at QSpray, SOCIAL25. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, clean it out. So here's some examples. This is a Birchmeyer backpack that wasn't properly cleaned out. The first picture, you can see that chemical buildup in the bottom of the tank. A couple of issues there. The first issue is that's chemical that the customer paid for that didn't get and that the tech thought he was applying at the customer's house and was not. And secondly, eventually that's going to break free and clog something. And the next two pictures, the next, second picture shows the handle that's totally full of gunk. And the third picture shows a check valve with some, some hardened, broken off chemical in there. And that is going to prevent that Birchmeyer from operating properly. So this was downtime and repair expense. Here's the B&G photo we showed you with the totally clogged B&G filter. It's never been cleaned out. You know, you want to run clean water through your system and tear it down, clean it out of occasionally. Here's some power sprayer cleanouts that weren't done. This is a pickup tube with clogged with fertilizer. This is a fitting that is clogged with chemical. I, this reminds me of my arteries after I have lunch at McDonald's. But think about how hard that pump has to work to suck through that little hole. The next one, oh, this, remember that orange filter? This is the pump from that orange filter. And this is the manifold that's clogged with chemical. The diaphragm burst because there was no water on one side, so it ran hot and it burst. And here's a connecting rod. This is supposed to be perfectly smooth. You can see it's totally grooved out, and there's metal that was fused to it because it was running so hot. So this was a total, total loss in this pump, over $1,000 of damage because the tech didn't check the filter. This is a termite pump that was totally clogged with hardened termiticide. And this is my favorite one. The picture on the left shows a pickup tube going into a tank of fertilizer, and that green fertilizer is about four or five inches solid, thick, totally solid. This tank had never been cleaned out, and on the right-hand side, you see some of the fittings that were on this 
sprayer and I drew a box around the hole that the pump had to suck through. That little black thing is the, what the pump was sucking through. And this was so bad, the, the pump was a total loss. The tank was a total loss. We had to cut up the tank and throw it away. And all the plumbing fittings and hose and, and feeder suction hoses had to be replaced. Very, very expensive problem. So um, those are the first three equipment secrets, productivity secrets I wanted to share. If you want to get all the top 10 secrets, go to www.pesttop10.com. That's pesttop10.com, and you can download all of the top 10 productivity secrets. And um, keep your eyes open. I hope to do more of these short videos. I hope this was helpful. And when you need pest or landscape equipment, please think of qspray.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.